Hello and welcome to Cardiology 101. This is Dr. Shiraz and today we are going to discuss posterior wall MI. So just uh, so first of all, let's us look at the criteria for posterior wall MI. The leads that we should be looking for are V1, V2, and V3. And the point here to note is we will see ST segment depression in those leads instead of elevation. When we see STEMI, we, see, we think of ST segment elevations. But since it is posterior wall MI and we do not have leads for the posterior wall, we use V1, V2, V3 as mirror images and we look for ST segment depressions. But we can confirm the diagnosis with leads V7, V8, V9. What we do is we put V4, V5, V6 to the back of the patient and we obtain the leads we call V7, V8, V9. So um, this is our first example. If we look at lead V1, lead V2, and lead V3, what we see is our ST segment depression and our upright T wave and prominent R wave. This is the criteria for posterior wall MI. We should have our prominent R wave, our shelf-like ST segment depression and upright T wave. This is a criteria for posterior wall MI. We see this in two contagious leads. We call this posterior wall MI. Now the point to note here is that individual posterior wall MI is very rare because 80 to 85 percent of the human population receive the posterior supply of heart from the right coronary artery. 80 percent of the times our RCA gives rise to posterior descending artery and that is the artery that supplies the posterior wall and we call that heart to be right dominant heart. In 15 to 20 percent of the patient, the posterior descending artery can be given by left circumflex artery or left anterior descending artery. Why we are discussing this? Because uh, I told you that posterior wall MI individually is very rare. What we see is we see it in combination with inferior wall MI because RCA that supplies the inferior wall if that gets blocked, it can give rise to posterior wall MI. But in 15 to 20 percent of the patient, we can also see posterior wall MI in combination of lateral wall MI or anterior wall MI. But that is rare. All right. So if we look at this example again, we have ST segment depression, T segment depression, ST segment depression, and upright R, upright T, and prominent R. We know that. Uh, when we start seeing R wave from V1 to V4, it is very negligible compared to S wave. But in the case of posterior wall MI, what we see is our S, uh, our prominent R wave, sometimes even bigger than the S wave. And then shelf-like ST segment depression and upright T wave. This is our posterior wall MI. So there is a test called mirror test. So we take our ECG strip and we flip it upside down so the back of ECG is facing towards us then we look at towards the light then what we will see we will see that V1, V2, V3 will have ST segment elevations this is called mirror test because you know the V1, V2, V3 are on the anterior side of the heart but just in front of the posterior wall all right so we can confirm the diagnosis of posterior wall MI by this method. So uh, if we want to confirm our diagnosis of posterior wall MI, what we do is we take lead V4, V5 and V6 and we place it on the back side of the patient like this V7, V8 and V9. So the ECG we obtain, we mark lead V4 as V7, V5 as V8, uh, V6 as V9. So if we obtain that ECG, we'll start seeing ST segment elevation because, because now those leads are right above the area of infarct, right? So these, these are some examples of posterior wall MI coming with inferior wall MI. We discussed this thing in the previous video too. If you haven't watched that video, make sure to watch that too. So. ST segment elevation in lead 2, lead 3, and lead ABF, that is our inferior wall MI. Then we start seeing our shelf like ST segment depressions and upright T wave. You might ask me, this is the inverted T wave. No, this is not inverted T wave. This is our ST segment 
which is going down like this. Then we have upright T wave, upright T wave. This is our posterior wall MI in combination with inferior wall MI. This is another example. Lead 2 ST segment elevation, lead 3 ST segment elevation, lead AVF ST segment elevation, and lead 1 and lead AVL have ST segment depression. Then we have shelf like depression in V1, V2, and V3. We have our prominent R wave here, over here. So this is inferior wall MI plus posterior wall MI with some reciprocal depression in lateral wall. I think this clears your concept about posterior wall MI. If you have any question, write it down below. I will be happy to respond to that. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.